G'day viewers, it's Monday morning. I'm on my way to go and fault find a small off-grid system in um, Perth. Um, it's a Victron system. They've got a problem with it shutting down randomly. I think it's something to do with the battery, possibly the charge parameters that were set. It was purchased online from an Eastern States company, which typically doesn't work that well. Um, but anyway, I'll go and sort that out. But what I wanted to um, talk about was, I get a lot of people who contact me who want to go off grid um, in suburbia or you know in small rural towns where they've possibly got neighbours and that sort of thing. Now people want to go off grid for different reasons, um, but a lot of the time they, I'm getting a lot of people that just want to go off grid just because they want to. Um, they don't want to feed any power back into the grid. Um, they want to stick it to Synergy, our energy retailer, um, for whatever reason. People have got their different reasons for wanting to do that. But um, the conversation will typically go, you know, oh, G'day Jason, I want to, um, we live in wherever and we want to go off grid. And. Um, I talk to them and say, okay, no worries. Well, um, going off grid, it's typically not cheap. You know, if you've got a small, tiny home, um, then you're probably with low consumption, then you're going to be looking at around the 25 grand mark, something like that. Um, if you've got a medium home, then you're probably up around the 50 grand. And if you've got a large home with a lot of power consumption, well, you could be anywhere north of 75 grand, depending on your consumption of energy. And um, the thing is, for a, an off-grid system, if it's been, been designed properly, then every off-grid system needs to have a generator to support it. And um, that generator is typically going to be a diesel generator. And of course, if you're in suburbia, then that's just really not practical. Your neighbors aren't gonna be too happy if you have a diesel generator running. Um, they smell, they're noisy, and yeah, that's just not going to work. If you're on a rural property and your neighbours are off in the distance, then yeah, that's fine, no problem. Um, so if you're in suburbia and you want to go off grid, um, that's not the way to do it. But there is a better solution. Um, and um, as many of you know, I'm a big fan of Tesla Powerwall. And it's because they have so many functions and they just do the job so well and they do it every time without failure they just they just work it's a no bullshit setup it just works i love working with them um, so the reason i would suggest to you if you're in suburbia to go with a tesla powerwall if you want to go off grid is for the following reasons if you've got solar or you want to get solar and the solar that you have which falls in line with the capacity that western power and synergy say you can have which typically if your single phase is going to be five kilowatts if a solar system that size meets your needs um, during the day and you've got enough surplus solar to charge the battery then and your single phase then this is the way i would tell you to go and you're in suburbia so tesla powerwall um, you can it can it can island which means it can form a grid for your existing or your new single phase solar inverter to stay active and stay online okay so when the when the power goes down the power wall takes over it's a grid forming inverter your inverter will stay active it will supply power to your home it will supply power to the battery and you can go on indefinitely like that there's no problem there um, it's a UPS source of power uh, so when the power does go out, there's no break in power. It's it's constant. All right. Um, so if you're working on a you know personal computer or something like that, whereas if the power goes out, you lose everything you're working on. I know most people use laptops, but yeah. Um, so if resetting your clocks, that sort of thing. So with the Tesla Powerwall, there's no break in the power. Um, you barely even notice that the power's gone off. Um, you just get a notification on your app and maybe sometimes just a little um, flicker on the lights. Um, so that's uh, why I do that. Now time of use as well. So if you're on a peak tariff, um, 
you can use the time of use function on your Tesla Powerwall. So you can take advantage of peak and on off peak power um, tariffs. So for my Powerwall, that's exactly what I'm doing. With Synergy, we have a tariff called the Midday Saver Tariff. So between uh, 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Uh, to buy power is really quite cheap. Um, so in winter, for example, my Tesla power wall, typically on a cloudy day in winter, it won't get fully charged. But what time of use charging enables you to do is the Tesla system will take only what's needed from the grid to make sure it's charged by 3 p.m., which is when I start paying, um, I think my peak tariff is around 58 cents. It's just gone up, actually. So I think it's about 58 cents. So it's quite expensive. Um, so by 3 p.m. every day, my battery will be fully charged. But what the Tesla system does, it's very clever. It will only take from the grid what it needs to ensure that the battery is fully charged by 3 p.m. So I've watched it quite a few times during the day and it's watching how much solar you're making and it's watching how much energy your home is using. And it's just taking little bits from the grid just as it needs to make sure that battery is fully charged by 3 p.m. There's some other batteries that can do that, but they, they hard charge, so they will take everything from the grid. Um, it's not dynamic, it's not intuitive, it's not looking at what's happening in the system. Um, so even if you don't have enough, oh, I just hit a bird, sorry bird. Um, even if you don't have enough solar generation, um, you can still take advantage of that midday saver tariff, you know, um, because it's cheap power and then that will get you through the peak periods and that's the whole purpose of the battery. Um, the Tesla Powerwall is AC coupled so what that means is you can retrofit the Tesla Powerwall to any solar inverter. I think there's a tiny amount of the of inverters that aren't compatible but they're really old school um, but I've not come across one yet that's not compatible so when a salesperson says to you oh it's a battery ready system that's just such bullshit because if you're buying a system that's battery ready unless you're buying the batteries for that particular inverter at that time of purchase then it's highly likely that by the time you get around to actually buying batteries that that system is superseded and those batteries are no longer available or even compatible with that inverter. Um, so with the Tesla Powerwall, it can be retrofitted to any solar inverter. So when a salesman says to you, oh, it's battery ready, it's, I hate that term because the Tesla Powerwall can be retrofitted to any uh, solar system, okay? So there's a lot of flexibility there. Um, gives you a lot of options um, so yeah there's no there's no restrictions there uh, the app the Tesla app is really easy to navigate it sends you notifications um, to let you know what's happening um, whereas a lot of other systems don't do that there are no notifications or anything like that and <laughs> on the Tesla app there is a button that says go off-grid so if you really want to disconnect from the grid and not feed your power into the grid, you can click go off grid and the relay de-energizes and you are disconnected from the grid, just like that. But bear in mind what I said in the beginning, you need the grid as your backup generator because there are going to be times when you're not gonna have enough solar and that comes back to that diesel generator. Because um, if you are off grid, you need a backup source of power. It's plain and simple. Um, unless you're prepared to have the lights go out for, you know, a day or two. Um, so that's really good. Uh, minimal space, the Powerwall is probably the best looking battery on the market by far. Um, it only sticks out from the wall 150 millimetres. I believe it's 748 millimetres wide um, and 1100 millimetres tall. They're not exact figures, but thereabouts. Um, you can put it on the floor in the in the corner or you can put it high on the wall um, you can stack them uh, one in front of the other you've got lots of options with mounting them and they're a good looking battery it's not like you're going to look at it and think oh Jesus what an ugly piece of crap need to hide that 
it's a good looking battery. Um, so, and also they don't, a lot of the battery systems are like a rectangular block and they're plonked somewhere in your garage and they take up a lot of space, obviously because they're an awkward shape. So there's that to consider as well. You can put the Tesla Powerwall up high, out of the way, um, no problem, all sorted. Um, scalable, you can add to the add to the system really easily. It's got cellular comms inbuilt to the Tesla Gateway. So what I mean by that is it's got its own inbuilt SIM card. It's not dependent on your home Wi-Fi network. So a lot of uh, a lot of inverters and solar products they need to connect to your home Wi-Fi um, so that they can connect to its monitoring platform or its portal or whatever. Um, we do connect the Tesla to your home Wi-Fi as a backup network, but it does actually have its own inbuilt SIM card. So it communicates back to Tesla with its own um, network. Uh, so if you change your modem or there's a problem with your modem or something like that, it's not a major drama because it can use its own SIM card to communicate. Um, the other advantage of that is that means it's constantly doing its own firmware update. So it's constantly getting the latest technology, the latest battery management uh, firmware to get the best out of that battery for the life of it. They're warranted for 10 years, but the degradation and the charge that I've seen on them is extremely minimal. And I'm very comfortable with the amount of failures I've had, which has only been two. Um, and I think I've got 70 plus systems out there that they're going to last well beyond their warranty period. Um, the Tesla Powell is liquid cooled and heated. Um, now we do have the release of the Tesla Powerwall 3 coming up, which I believe uses a different system, um, but for all intents and purposes, it's the same thing. So it can cool and heat itself. Um, which is fantastic because if you have a lithium battery in a really cold climate, uh, they don't, that's the, the one setback uh, with lithium technology is that um, they won't charge or discharge when they're really cold. Um, it affects their ability to charge and discharge, whereas the Tesla Powerwall will use a little bit of its own energy to precondition the battery to warm it up so that it can accept that charge and uh, likewise in summer it can cool itself uh, with a liquid cooling system and um, that's great for those warmer climates so that's what i would suggest if you're in a residential area or even if you're in a rural area and you want to go off grid Tesla Powerwall costs about 14 grand at the moment in uh, Australia, supplied and installed, depending on where you are. That is way cheaper than disconnecting from the grid completely and going off grid. Now, the one exception to everything I've just said is that if you have, if you're in suburbia, you're single phase and you have high power consumption, then Western Power restrict us on our inverter capacity and that applies to the Tesla Powerwall as well. So they will restrict you to uh, 5 kilowatt inverter capacity if you are single phase. Now if that is not enough solar for your home then you're going to need to and you still want to go off grid then you're going to need it to look at something like a, a hybrid system, a true hybrid system like Selectronic or SMA Sunny Island has recently been approved for connection also. Um, and you can have that set up in suburbia and be as off-grid as you can in suburbia and that enables you to have as much solar and batteries as you like but you're still using the grid as your backup generator. Now how they do that is it doesn't operate parallel to the grid like regular uh, string grid connected inverters. Okay, they all operate parallel to the grid so they're working with the grid, they're dependent on the grid um, uh, for, for their signal to activate and work. Um, so the way to get around that, yeah, is Selectronic or Sunny Island, but straight away you're gonna be looking at, you know, 45, 50 grand at the moment to go with uh, a system like that. So that's probably the only exception to using uh, a Tesla Powerwall to, you know, be off grid, okay? So hope that helps you. I uh, get asked that question a lot 
and that's half the reason I make these videos is so that I can share this discussion with those people that ask the questions um, so they can educate themselves and understand how it all works a bit better so hope that's helped chat to you later bye